while we get these 18 year old Fabri- men yeah. that are on a football pitch yeah. that suddenly collapse. Oh, Fabrice yeah. Mwamba is Fabrice probably Mwamba. one of the most predominant stories. I believe he had the same thing, or maybe it was Brigada, I'm not sure. But there are a couple of cardiac conditions that do affect that community more. So yeah. when she's saying that she's feeling breathless with that history of her grandmother having that condition, to me as a clinician, that's a red flag, like absolutely. Yeah. The thing is, we weren't aware that her grandmother, well, I wasn't anyway, Mm. until what happened to Nicole. Um, But she was failed back in 1986 because she should have been screened straight away. Her dad should have been screened and her her dad's got three other sons Mm. and her dad got it. Yeah. And he only just found out, only found out because of Nicole. Her two middle brothers don't, um, but the baby does. And this is why screening is so important. Yeah, it really is. It and really is. We, um, well, her dad's um, cardiologist is Dr. Anil Malhotra, is one of the leading um, specialists in the country. And he um, does tests on footballers for the um, the, the, like, the big clubs, etc. cetera. Mm-hmm. And um, there's quite a, f- there's, there are a few footballers that, have got the condition yeah. um but they've been deemed safe because they've found what or, or how to to live with it yeah and nicole's dad's had an operation since yeah um and had nicole have been screened and she would have been here her remain would have been here today yeah. even the day that nicole was um and rain sadly passed away they didn't have all the equipment for rain the rain survived seven hours and at least we managed to get there. I could hold him. I took pictures yeah. with the fact that the one where you see him holding Bogger's hand, mm. I took that picture. Um, I wish I'd taken more now. I, I, I was just, of I was course. so numb. Yeah. I, I just couldn't believe the, And I just keep playing it back in my mind because I feel like I've got trauma. But my mental state you just don't know what people suffer with until you've actually gone through it. Mm-hmm. Cause I, cause Bogger was FaceTiming me with Nicole struggling to breathe on the floor and I could see her gasping for air. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm not telling him to do CPR to bide her some more time or, or even bide rain some more time. That CPR is what literally that bystander CPR is so essential as yeah. well. And like, they it saves done quickly, they, like immediately. immediately. Yeah. 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 They didn't tell him to do that at all. So there was failings there. And what really, really annoyed me, and I really wanted to get up and really, I'll be honest, punch the Yorkshire ambulance, the, one of the directors, mm-hmm. because I specifically asked my legal team to ask him, um, are the two um, 999 operators still, are they still, because they went on leave straight away, mm-hmm. on sick leave. Yeah. And I said to him, are they back from leave now? And he said he doesn't know which clearly shows he doesn't give a shit yeah, basically. about Nicole and Rain because yeah. had if that was the case, he would have known where they were, whether they were back so that he could then find out what went wrong, mm-hmm. how he can to stop that from happening again, mm-hmm. you know? And so clearly they don't, they don't care. And that's what's so annoying me. No apologies, no, like, it was empty explain? apologies or sorry for your loss. What's that going to do for me? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. You can go home to your, your family, family yeah. spend Christmas and have a laugh and have a nice time. Yeah. I'm, I'm at home on my own without mm-hmm. my only child and my grandson I'll never ever become a grandmother now because of that yeah. um you know and that's what hurts me even more yeah I sleep with rained um towel underneath yeah. my my pillow every night it's a picture of a duck um yeah. a yellow one um, well you know it's got the hood, the hood. Yeah, yeah yeah um are you getting support are you having counseling or anything? I don't want it right now yeah you're not ready yeah I mean for me to do this mm-hmm. in a way maybe kind of like my counselling like therapeutic yeah. we say that don't yeah. we yeah because yeah. I, I don't I'll be honest I don't necessarily speak to my family mm-hmm. about it mm-hmm. because it's too close yeah. if I yeah. say one thing they think oh that's an opening she's going to talk about Nicole and then they start and I went oh, I don't want to talk about it no more and I just yeah. shut it down and you're I, doing amazing right now yeah, yeah. So, so proud well. of you to even yeah. sit here like this incredible <laughs> fact, like you, yeah you know, I have to do just, it for them yeah and exactly you're, you're just making me you're gonna make me cry <laughs> yeah <now>. sorry <laughs> I'll do that <laughs> <laughs> I'll know, be crying we'll be crying tell us a bit yeah. about so that your your campaign <clears throat> and 
what can people do to get behind your cause and support you? Okay, so we're launching the Nicole Thea Foundation. Yeah. Um, it's still in progress at the moment. And um, we're launching it on the 29th of July, which is Nicole's 20, 28th birthday. Yeah. Um, and it's about um, saving mothers and improving lives. Mm -hmm. Again, as you know, um, black maternal health isn't the best. Mm -hmm. And um, at the moment, a lot's been done in Ghana because obviously that's where Bogger is from. Mm -hmm. And um, Nicole's been there before. And it's about helping women of color who are very deprived in that country. So that's where it's started already. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, where we've given a lot of food and and healthcare um, to people, uh, but to, to pregnant women, and um, here in the UK, it's st it's still slow um, at the moment because it's taken me that long to be able to do anything like that. Yeah. Because um, I really, really am struggling day yeah. to day just to do the slightest thing yeah. i hate putting petrol in the car i hate going shopping at one stage i couldn't even go to tesco's mm. yeah. and mm. when i i buy so many flowers for nicole that when i buy flowers at tesco's and the lady at the checkout says oh they're beautiful flowers who are they for and I, i'll be honest this one my dead daughter and my grandson mm. and that's what i say and their face drops and i'm thinking but that's just me being angry mm. Mm. Yeah. Like the whole situation she's smiling i'm like i'm not buying them because i want to buy them mm. yeah because that's what that's just what's going through my, it's such my a brain process, yeah. you're gonna go through it aren't you All different yeah kind of and i hated yeah. seeing any kids or any babies mm -hmm. yeah i mean it was their anniversary and had all the family from manchester and um my cousin curtis um and his wife, Laurie, have got a little girl called Oracle. And that's the first time that I actually picked her up mm -hmm. and hugged her, um, which was a big step for me. Yeah. A yeah, huge, huge step. Yeah. I'm still processing it. And it's going to take, I, I don't know how long it's going to take. It, 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 yeah. I'll never, ever stop feeling the way I do. But I'm yeah. hoping that it will get easier. As a mother myself that's mm -hmm. lost a child, I will tell you, I am about 16 years on. And it does get easier, but it stays with you. 